I've read through all your guys' comments, and Tribal decks and Land Disruption decks seem to be the most requested videos right now. So let's combine the two and make Green Merfolk, or Islandless Merfolk, or whatever you want to call it, but it's pretty gangster. The deck has a lot of overlap with traditional Merfolk. We do have Aether Vial, Curse Catcher, Adept, Harbinger, Lord of Atlantis, Master of Pearl Trident, Rejury, and Kira. So a lot of similar cards, but there is a twist, and that twist is that we have Green, and that allows us to use Noble Hierarch and Collected Company, both of which are really, really good cards. Noble Hierarch's really good in the deck because we can ramp faster, and we also have Exalted, which is nice. And then Collected Company is really good because it can be played as an instant. So your opponent sets up all their blockers. They think they can win in the exchange. And all of a sudden, Collected Company comes out. You drop a few lords. And then all of a sudden, your creatures are bigger. And now you have the better exchange. Now, this idea of putting green in with Merfolk isn't a new idea. And as soon as Collected Company was released, a good number of people tried using green with Merfolk. The problem is, is that you lose a little bit of consistency in that now you have to deal with a second color. And regular Merfolk, just regular blue Merfolk, is a deck that's not spectacular. It never really has insane matchups, or insanely good matchups, I mean. But it's just a very consistent deck. And the fact that it's a single color allows you to start at 20 life and make your opponent earn the win by making them deal 20 damage to you. Plus, there's a lot of cards that have double blue, and having a second color does make it difficult to pull it off. So at the time Collected Company was released, there weren't really a whole lot of good reasons to switch into green-blue. But with the current meta, there are much less counter cards than there were just a year ago, and so something like Collected Company firing on turn 3 or 4 is more reasonable than it was in the past, where you really don't have to worry about remands and mana leaks all that much anymore. But instead of there being a lot of counter cards out there, there's now a lot of creature removal out there, and Merfolk is one of the decks that's getting hit the hardest right now, just because its strength comes in numbers. And if your opponents are insta-killing your creatures, it makes it really hard to finish with Merfolk. So regular blue Merfolk is really hurting right now. So the question is, will adding green to it help it? Because the thing with Collective Company, it's an instant. It makes it much harder for your creatures to die. First of all, if you try and lightning bolt one of your creatures, you can drop in Collective Company, hopefully hit a Lord, and that will hopefully get your creature out of bolt range. And Kira is a really great card to use with Collective Company because they try and target one of your creatures. You use Collective Company, hit Kira, now your creatures are protected for the most part. But that's not all, because if you notice our lands, we don't have islands or fetches. All we got are these non-basic lands. About half of them can produce both colors and some of the other ones are just ghetto islands. Like the hub card which we don't have any white in the deck but it's basically an island or non-basically an island or whatever. But there's a good reason for this and that's because in our sideboard we got three chokes because there's that very magical magical moment where your opponent realizes they just got choked by a merfolk deck. So the idea is we have no islands, nothing that says islands, no dual lands that say islands. So our lands untap but your opponent's islands do not untap. And since merfolk is based around island walk and almost all Merfolk decks run four Spreading Seas main deck. Choke works pretty well in the deck. Plus, we have three Seas claims in the sideboard to make extra islands. And the best part is, nobody will ever see this coming. Because it's kind of like a plot twist within a plot twist. First they see blue and Aether Vial, and they're like, oh, it's Merfolk. And then they see green, and they think they're clever, and that, oh, it's probably Noble Hierarch. And they're probably smart enough to guess Collected Company. And they think they figured it out, so they'll play around Collected Company turn four. Then all of a sudden, on turn three, or even turn two with Noble Hierarch, Choke comes out, and they're caught off guard. So gangster, so gangster. Now, now, people will probably criticize this deck in the comments saying that the original Merfolk deck is more consistent and that Choke works against Collected Company because it's not a creature and that having all non-basics will leave us vulnerable to Path to Exile, Blood Moon, and Ghost Quarter. And to that I say, do you understand the joy of dropping Choke when you're a Merfolk player? It's like the biggest dick slap you can do. It's like a sloppy dick slap. Plus, green gives us a lot more options for sideboarding and other than Choke, my favorite sideboard addition is Nature's Claim. There are a lot of affinity decks out there right now. It was actually the most played deck for a couple days and then all of a sudden Titan Shift took it over. But still, a lot of artifact decks out there. And Nature's Claim, a lot better than Hercules Recall. Because with Hercules Recall, it goes back to hand, but then they just come back in the next turn. So didn't really accomplish that much. And that's kind of the big one. Other than that, we have Heroic Intervention. It gives your permanence indestructible and hexproof. And as a Merfolk player, all your stuff's going to get targeted all the time. So throwing this card in the mix is pretty helpful. The other stuff is just typical Merfolk stuff. We have Relic of Progenitus, two of them. Graph Digger's Cage, which stops Snapcaster and Dredge. And then Dismember. A lot of Merfolk decks play at main deck. We don't have it main deck. We have it in sideboard. And then Tide by Under Mage, which pins down red or green creatures. But for sure, the sideboard highlight is Choke. And it's nice just to have a curveball in there, because say game two, you throw down Choke, they're caught off guard, then going into game three, they'll need to play around it. So if they're already a blue deck, they're probably gonna skimp out on fetching for islands. And so going into game three, you can just take out the Chokes and they still think it's there. And then they play around it, which slows them down. So just a pretty cool twist on things. But the biggest concern for our deck is the non-basic lands. If they drop Blood Moon, we do have Aether Vial and Noble Hierarch, so we can still survive. And Ghost Quarter and Path to Exile are also just big problems for us because we can't get basics. And honestly, I think the deck would do better if it had like at least one island, even with Choke. <sighs> Should we put one in? I don't know. I mean, I call, I'm calling it Islandless Merfolk because there are no islands. But like if we put in one island, would it still be Islandless Merfolk? I, as in like island less, as in like there are less islands. I, I think we can we can make that claim, right? So we could swap one of these guys out for an island because there's a lot of paths going around. A lot of decks out there have Path to Exile and having one basic and fetching for basic in response to Path will deter them to some extent because then they'll be like, oh, they have basics and they're Merfolk 
folk base should have basics. And if there's one, there's probably more. So it could be a good deterrent, but it's not islandless then. We'll just go and say that islandless means less island. So we will throw one in instead of one of these turd cards, which doesn't really help us because it's white. So technically we're now like single island merfolk with less islands than normal merfolk. And it has green and choke and collected company. I don't know, the names are complicated. But let's try out the deck and hopefully we get some good dick slaps in. Opening hand has one land, not good enough, we'll mull. And this will suffice. Master on top, drop an Aether Vial and pass a turn. And if we're up against blue, we have Cavern of Souls, good. So we'll go ahead, drop Master of the Pearl Trident. And for whatever reason, if we need to drop in Curse Catcher, we can. Opponent has two lands on tap, we'll Vial in Curse Catcher. Oh boy, I guess we'll just go for it. We'll drop in, and now with all of our creatures out, we'll swing in for eight. Opponent goes to 11, pass a turn. If they don't kill one of our guys, then we have lethal next turn. Well, pretty good for game one of match one. Going into game two, we'll get rid of our Spreading Seas and our Harbingers, and instead put in Graph Digger's Cage, Relic of Progenitus, and Choke. And hopefully the Choke will catch him off guard, but unfortunately, if he's an experienced player, he'll know not to get things with Islands, and so then Choke kind of doesn't really work out, but sometimes for our blue decks, it's just unavoidable. And with that, let's go to game two. Nothing too spectacular in the opening hand, but we do have Cavernous Souls, so we will keep Visions, and can't really do anything this turn, so we'll drop this and pass. A second vision. One land and tap. I'm assuming he has lightning bolt. So let's drop in Harbinger, expecting him to get hit and pass the turn. A third vision. What? Why is there green? What what deck is he? And here we have green. So next turn we can drop this. And for now, the safest option here is to drop this guy so our guys can't get hit, or at least not easily hit. And swing for two. A fourth semen visions. Wow, that is a lot. And you think with all that scrying that he'd be finding something, right? That's like scry eight. Collected company. So let's hang on to that and attack for four and pass the turn. Opponent drops snapcaster, sure. And you know, I, a lot of people played semen visions against me, but I don't think anyone's played five in one <laughs> one game. Yep. Doesn't look like our opponent's gonna tap out, so let's go ahead and do this anyway. Will they counter? Yep, remand, sure. Now the Kiji's collected company, but honestly our hand's so good that I think we'll just dump it now. So drop Marrow, followed by Lord of Atlantis, tapping our opponent's creature, I guess, and then swing in for six. And as long as they don't have like Anger of the Gods, some kind of board wipe, I think we got it. No place for our opponent. Let's see if they have Cryptic to tap us out. Let's go to attacks. And they do have Cryptic. We can still use Mutavolt. And now swing in for four. And then we get the match. All right, pretty fast match, which I'm totally fine with because we're starting round one of the league at four in the morning. But anything for my subscribers. But pretty good so far. Let's go to the next match and see how that one goes. Ew. Don't think we can keep this. It's mole. Not much better, but slightly better. We'll keep this on top. Mountain. Do we have burn? We shall find out. Drop in curse catcher and pass a turn. Lightning bolt. Two mountains. And then we'll swing in for one. Drop Silver Gill, opponent Lightning Bolts us, and we get Noble Hierarch, so now we pass the turn. Third Mountain, and hits us with Steering Blaze. All right, oh boy, tough call here. Here is really good, but if we wanna try and dump our hands soon, I think we need Marrow, so we'll drop in Marrow and swing in for two. Opponent takes two. Now the question is, are opponent just mono red or is he having land problems? Opponent drops in Monastery, Lava Spikes us, and swings in for two. All right, no blocks. Two Lightning Bolts away from a loss, and their lands aren't really helping out here. So let's go for it. We'll drop in Lord of Atlantis, untapping this land, and turning Mutavolt into a creature, and we'll swing in with three guys. Opponent takes 10, goes to seven. We have lethal next turn, but three cards in hand, they could hit us for six pretty easily. We're pretty much half to block here. And we got this guy if we need him. Taps three to use Rift Bolt, but we're just gonna use Wait a second. Does he have another land in hand? Is he gonna drop the other land? Uh, we'll find out. Gotta counter it. Will he drop another mountain? No. All right. Okay, a bit risky, but I think we got it. We'll dump this guy. Actually, not risky at all, because we'll just tap this guy out. And swing in for eight, and then there's the game. Yep. So I guess they are mono red. All right. Going into game two, I'm going to get rid of three Harbingers and two Spreading Seas to put in this thing, this thing, and also three Sea Claims just to speed up a little bit and make it so we can't use his mountains. But not too many changes, and with that, let's go to game two. No land hand. Let's mull. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We'll keep land on the bottom. Spark Elemental. All right. Not the most insane card ever, but it's pretty cool. I used this in a deck back in the day. I think it was like an Elemental deck, and then I also had a burn version of it. Anyway, we'll drop this guy. Instead of Curse Catcher, we'll use Seas Claims to buy some time and pass the turn. Opponent drops another mountain, but then passes the turn back. Ooh, interesting. I guess we'll just drop both Curse Catchers. One Curse Catcher, two Curse Catchers. Ah, so not mono red. They have some white, but they don't
don't have fetches. It's like budget Boros, I guess. An opponent drops Searing Blade, sure. <laughs> and another Seize Claim. Works for us. So pay one here, put it on that. Then drop Master of the Pearl Trident. And swing in for two. Oh no, he keeps getting lands. Shoot, it's burned. They're supposed to run dry at like two lands. Opponent swings in way too suspicious. No blocks. We pull a Curse Catcher. Let's drop it. And swing in for four. And might as well throw down Mutavolt. Pass the turn. Too many lands. Oh, the Seize Claims did slow him down a bit. Bark Elemental. Opponent swings in with that. No blocks. And we pull a Spreading Seize. All right, sure. Might as well drop it. What is he doing? Ah, Boros Charm. Well, that happened. Collected Company. How defensive do we need to be right now? I think we swing in with everything except for the master and then just block the Swiss Sphere with master next turn and chump block and then hopefully collect the company hit something good to finish. Or do you want one of these to chump block? Nah, let's we'll take the risk. Pass the turn, see what our opponent's got. Opponent does swing in, so we have to block here just to be safe. Skull crack, pull this. But let's just see if we can pull off the win this turn. Actually, I don't know if we can. Is there any possible way we could? No, I don't think so. So the safer option might actually be just to do this. Drop in the mage, and then with Mutavolt and the two Hearse Catchers, we'll swing in. Won't be lethal, but it will set us up for a win next turn if our opponent doesn't pull a Lightning Bolt. That, that they could. I don't know. I feel like it's our best chance of winning is just to give them one extra turn, and if they don't have it there, then we win. Ah, shoot. We're going to game three. No changes to the sideboard, and opening hand seems a bit slow, but I think we'll keep it anyway. Pass the turn. Monastery. And this turn, we'll drop in Lord of Atlantis, and then pass the turn to our opponent. No Searing Blaze. Up, oh, Searing Blaze. Shit. Ether Vial, not really right time for Ether Vial. We'll drop in Marrow and pass the turn. Next turn, we can drop in Collect the Company. And yeah. What? Rift Bolt. All right. Play our fourth land, pass the turn. Hopefully, we hit something good with that because we're getting wrecked right now. Another Monastery and a Spark Elemental. Opponent swings in, so in response, we will use Collect the Company. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh man. Do we. Do we risk it? We do have a second one, so I guess you risk and block like this just to soak up some damage. All right, mission accomplished. Can we survive all this? We'll find out. I guess we'll swing in with Curse Catcher and drop in a vial and pass the turn. Kind of drops a land and attacks. Ugh, come on. Well, double block. Flames of the Blood Hand. We go to three. Ugh. Opponent kills Kira. We pull Noble. I, ugh, man. We'll drop Kira. We're one lightning bolt away from losing to a deck with Spark Elemental in it. But uh, could swing for four, but to be safe, we'll drop a Noble. And instead, only swing for three, which is a bit paranoid, but whatever. Do they have the win? No. <laughs> oh, man. Merfolk is just like the worst deck for the meta right now. It's like between all this creature removal. Like every single deck has tons of creature removal. Like why can't we just find like one deck that just doesn't worry about creatures? Erg. Well... It happens. Ah, oh, man. Man, oh, man. Well, on to the next match. Open hand looks all right. We'll keep it. Drop this thing, followed by Vile, and pass the turn. Looks like it's Scred. We'll drop in this guy, draw an island, and pass the turn. Mindstone, and we'll Vile in Curse Catcher. And what are the odds they have Anger of the Gods? Because they could drop a land, do this. Even if they do, I guess it's worth just going for it. We'll drop Marrow, and swing in for five. Opponent goes to 15. Please no board wipe, please no board wipe. Gred, sure. And <laughs> Blood Moon, oh no. That's horrible against our deck. We're a horrible for our deck, man. I'm so tired, I can't even think. Well, the good news is with Vile, it doesn't really matter too much. Although I really want to drop this thing, but whatever. Swing in for five. What's happening? Chandra, killing the master, sure. And we get another one, cool. Could play it safe and hit Chandra with Silver Gill, but I don't think it's really worth it. We'll go at him, at Chandra. And before damage is dealt, we'll drop in the Pearl Trident guy. Opponent's at seven, pass the turn. Opponent's digging. Opponent drops another Mind Stone, draws another card, so he must be getting pretty desperate at this point. And we do have, oh, yep, you can see All right, going into game two, we're gonna get rid of our Spreading Seas because he is monocolored, and get rid of one Harbinger to put in three Nature's Claims for Blood Moon or in case he has Ensnaring Bridge. Also we'll put in this and this, and with that, we'll go to game two. Wow, this hand has turds written all over it, but we'll keep it. Second vial, so we'll throw down Mutavault, put in a vial. This is gonna be very rough. We do have Collected Company, so there's the light at the end of this tunnel. Mindstone? Oh, jeez, come on. Well, you know what? Let's just drop all of them. <laughs> Triple vial. P and Kira Nalar. Another Collected Company, so that could come in handy. I kinda wanna attack with Mutavault, but that would be pretty bad, so let's just uh, pass the turn. Relic and no attacks from our opponent. Let's just uh, flash this guy in anyway. 
Hopefully we can draw out some removal. Come on, just hit him. Just, just hit him. Just, just try and hit him. Up, oh, he got us. <laughs> What can we do there? So it should be just go ahead and drop collected company now. Nah, we'll wait. Opponent draws a card. Eternal Scourge. Thought that was Blood Moon for a second. Still no attacks from opponent. All right, let's just go for it. Here comes collected company. We'll go with Silver Gill and Noble Hierarch. Actually, why did I do that? No, I meant to, uh, I meant to take Curse Catcher. I'm tired. It's almost five in the morning, like a couple minutes away from five in the morning. Actually, Noble Hierarch might not be that bad because in case they like Blood Moon us, I guess we can uh, have, I don't know. Well, actually, we have enough to activate Muta Vault and swing in with it. So that was the plan all along. And I think it's worth the risk. Now, nah, we'll play it safe. Let's attack with Muta Vault. And opponent attempts to kill it. He'll probably be successful, but let's drop in Collected Company. The question is, why didn't he uh, do it before he got the plus one? All right, so we have Marrow and Silvergill. Oh, man, I was hoping that was the Lord. Well, that dies. But we're still looking good as long as our opponent doesn't have Board Wipe. Opponent swings in for four... Bit suspicious. Do they have board wipe? I actually just killed that thing. That actually makes more sense. Or equal sense. Or, I don't know. I'm tired. If you hear a loud thud, it's probably because I passed out. Oh my gosh, I hit a land. And I don't think there's really... Is there a need to attack? I kind of don't want him just to ping using artifacts. So we'll swing him with one guy. Opponent takes three. Pass the turn. Opponent swings for three. No blocks. Curse catcher. Sure. Swing in with one guy. Opponent blocks. All right. Seems like a good trade. Must stay awake. Noble Hark, where'd you go? Koth makes a man land. Swings for four, no blocks. Vile and Curse Catcher, but they're at 17 life. I don't really think we can do too much here. We do get a Marrow, but I think at this point it's a story of too little, too late. He's already pretty well established. We could flash him at the end of turn, but I guess we'll play it out. Another man land. And that guy. Opponent swings for seven. Yeah, we, we can't come back from that. What would we have drawn, though? Nope, not gonna cut it. No change to the sideboard. On to game three. <laughs> this is quite the interesting hand. All right, as long as they don't have Blood Moon, I think we're okay. I mean, we have Ether Vials and Collected Company. I, I, I guess it's pretty good, because if they have Blood Moon, we have the Vials. If they don't have Blood Moon, we have the Collected Companies. I feel like it's a good hand. Opponent Moles the five, we'll drop Vial and pass a turn. Pull Marrow, we'll drop another Vial and pass a turn. Pull a third land, good. Do we want to save it for Vial, though? Is it do it all at once? Probably. Let's just pass. If we can hit a land next turn, I think we're in good shape. Eternal Scourge. And we do hit a land. Nice. And we'll save all of it for the end of our opponent's turn. Or if they attack, we could do it then too. P and Cure in the lore. No attacks for our opponent. And then we will do Collected Company. This is going to be pretty sweet. Oh. Definitely take Marrow. And either Silver Gill or Master the Pearl Trident. I guess Master is fine. And we'll also drop in this Marrow. Oh, man. <laughs> Wow, that is pretty sweet. All right, I think we got it. Oh shoot, only one creature. All right, the question is, do we start swinging now or just wait for the third collective company? I guess we just wait. I kind of want to keep them out of the range of any kind of removal spells or like board wipe because we do have stuff to stop removal. Opponent pulls Chandra, attempts to hit this guy. Nope, there's Kira. Wait a second. Wait, what? Oh shit, it became the target before we played it. Huh. I guess that makes sense. Luckily, opponent doesn't back it up with anything. Or maybe he thought the same thing. Maybe the damage, he thought the damage wasn't supposed to go through. I don't know. But I think we got the win now, because, I mean, if this isn't enough to do it, I, I don't know what it is, because look at this. Well, this one here wasn't too good, but drop in two Noble Hierarchs, and we'll go ahead, swing with everything at our opponent, and if they try anything funny, we can just flash this guy in. Opponent double blocks, so this thing will die, but we can save this guy by flashing in this guy. Opponents at two pass the turn. They could play Ensnaring Bridge or Hour of Devastation, but even that's out of range. I, I think they're digging. They have this, but even that, all, all the Merfolk are out of range of Scred even, and Scred's on five. But we're at 20. I think we got it. You think if someone has a bunch of 6-6 six, six out with... Yeah, okay, there we go. All right, cool. We win that one, but man, this is... It's rough. Like, every deck is just jam-packed with creature removal, and it didn't used to be this way. Like, this is the most creature removal I've seen in the meta, and, and I don't even know. It's like all the decks are like super fast and have super, like, creature removal, like, all all these Fatal Push decks that just popped up with the, you know, with the its new release. And, oh, man, I, just, I don't envy consistent Merfolk players. It's just so hard. Like, if, if Merfolk's your go-to deck, the meta right now is just so... Like, it's just torture. <laughs> I mean, this deck's fun to play, but it just feels like the whole world's out to get you. But it was pretty sweet dropping three collected companies and the ether vials were nice and yeah it was a pretty sweet sweet match right there. Opening hand two vials one collected company one spreading seas. We could keep it I mean it's not really a great hand but collected company we're on the play 
Could be good, but I guess we'll keep it just to see how it goes. Opponent drops a vial as well. Interesting. Could drop spreading seas or a vial. Probably just drop another vial and pass a turn. Opponent drops a visions and a second one. Man, everyone's just dropping visions. It'd be cool if they were like blue, black merfolk. That'd be cool. Like blue, green merfolk versus blue, black merfolk. But we will see. So nothing really to play here. I guess we'll just drop spreading seas on one of the lands. We hit another land. Not the one we need though, because we need one for this and this one won't cut it. But we'll just uh, pass a turn third one and we do hit a fourth land that's pretty good we'll save it for our opponent's turn though and uh, we could also flash this guy in so next turn looks pretty good what the hell this shit before that goes through let's drop and kira and we'll drop collected company as well pretty good regery and lord so to start things off let's drop spreading seas we pull a mutavolt we will then drop curse catcher and swing in with our guys might as well tap the vial just to be safe and they activate it what the hell this i'm kind of confused but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt and maybe he has something going that we don't see swinging with all of our guys there must be some kind of combo with this like he gets rid of all of our permanents and then we lose a bunch of life from it better watch out another transmute uh, i'm starting to see what's going on here i wonder if this deck has blood chief ascension next there's a combo with blood chief ascension and mind crank but it is a bit too late to use blood chief ascension in this game another lord of atlantis and i think that's game right there and our opponent concedes all right going into game two i'm gonna get rid of four spreading seas two harbingers to put in three nature's claims one dismember and two choke unfortunately it doesn't seem to have that many islands but i just want to put this card in because it's so cool and with that let's go to game two nothing too spectacular here but nothing terrible either we'll keep it inquisition and opponent takes the lord we we will drop curse catcher and pass the turn mind crank and before attacking we might as well drop in the adept and swing for one another inquisition takes marrow drops of visions not a whole lot going on for us but we could drop the kira protector creatures and swing in for three guild mage and hopefully our opponent doesn't realize we only have one island in our deck so this will drop noble hierarch then turn mutavolt into a creature and swing in for six opponents at eight will pass the turn oh i just figured it out i see now so as soon as one thing dies which is this this fire is followed by this which triggers this and we get an infinite combo i see interesting <laughs> let's just watch this it's gonna be pretty crazy ah <laughs> Oh, look at it go. Beautiful. Only change here, I'm going to put in Heroic Intervention instead of one choke because he really doesn't have that many islands. Opening hands kind of balls. I think we'll mull it. Yeah, much better. We'll keep put on top. Drop Hierarch and pass turn. Inquisition. So opponent took Kira. We'll drop the Adept, revealing Master. And we pull a choke. Interesting. We'll swing in. If he plays an island, I think we should drop it. But unfortunately, we have an island in hand as well. Darn that one island. Get an island, get an island, get an island. Yes. Whoa. I really want to drop this guy. But choke might be better. Actually, dropping Master of the Pearl Trident could be better. And hopefully he drops the second island next turn. And then we can tap knock uh, almost completely. And this turn we'll swing in with the Adept for four. Opponent goes to 13, pass the turn. Opponent gets a Swamp and drops Visions. And opponent passes it back to us. We will drop this thing. And a bit of a tough call here. We could turn Mutavolt into a creature. And that would put our opponent at one. Or we can drop Choke and hopefully he doesn't draw another island. And well, he won't be able to activate this unless he has Mind Crank out, right? So I think Choke is the better option. We'll swing in for seven. Victim of Night. Opponent goes to nine, and we might as well drop this thing, see how he responds to it. That long, awkward pause where he's just like, why is this an Ember Folk deck? Well, he could Coast Quarter himself, but it looks like I don't think our opponent's going to survive this, because then he has Spell Skype this, but what is that going to do? We pull Nature's Claim, we'll turn Mutavolt into a creature, and we'll swing in for six. What he could do is he get rid of his island by using this, make it so they're not unblockable, or, or he could do that. Sure. And he might as well Nature's Claim this thing so he can't block, but it does buy him some time. He's back at 13. Opponent taps out for slot slaughter pack oh if only our opponent knew we don't have any more basics in our deck so we'll attack with adept and mutavolt oh that figures and now we realize we don't have any more basics i'll finish things up by dropping harbinger and passing the turn another visions ghost quarters his own island uh oh and then transmutes this getting mind crank so we better speed things up here if only we had mutavolt but we don't so we'll swing in for four opponent goes to two we'll pass the turn back he won't be able to activate this and play mind crank in the same turn and our opponent can seize the match all right that was interesting a little bit scary because you didn't really know how quickly it went off it's it seems like a really janky combo but like when it works it's like really cool but this guy is like really susceptible to removal and that's like your whole strategy i mean for us like, we don't have any creature removal besides the dismember we boarded in but a lot of other decks out there will have like fatal pushes lightning bolts path to exiles and that's gonna be really hard to pull 
pull that off with mind crank and also with all the artifact removal floating around but it's a pretty cool idea and you can always appreciate an original deck like this and we got one more match for the league and so we'll see how that one goes oh boy this hand is really close to being really good if we can only play this turn one it'd be perfect i guess we'll keep it and risk it and it could be really bad if we don't have the right cards oh man we just really need a land not that land though we'll drop cavern and actually i think i might name humans oh this is so risky yeah we'll name humans to drop noble oh man that that's that's pretty risky but at least that way we can drop spreading seas if we don't run into any trouble i assume we're up against death and taxes opponent passes the turn back and we will drop down spreading seas on the plane tectonic edge i guess the plane eh, it's a tough call because he's probably mono white and he passed this guy all right we will search for our single island but then he'll be like oh there's more where this came from because more about making them think we have more than one island but anyway we'll drop in cavernous souls this time naming merfolk and pass the turn a land situation is looking pretty good except we need one green if we can pull a green land for next turn we can drop collective company and that'd be pretty sweet what interesting maybe it's not death and tax maybe it's like a variant where he destroys his own lands to make thingies there's thalia which is fine because you don't have the lands to play collective company anyway drop down mutavolt play lord of atlantis and we will also drop in ether vial to finish the turn up and then we pass the turn back then he uses tectonic edge to kill this that's fine ether vial number two for our opponent swings in for two no blocks from us how do we play this out i think we'll just drop in this merfolk here now this guy has island walk i can't think of anything that would stop this island walk from going through they'll probably have something that's flashed in with ether vial but island walk it won't be able to block anyway so all right Unless it's like Flicker Wisp, then they could trade Blaze Splicer. That's fine. Because Spreading Seas, Iron Walk, yeah. And Harbinger next turn would be pretty sweet to bounce this golem back. Opponent Vials in Flicker Wisp, targeting his land. All right. That's fine because we do have another Spreading Seas. And I don't know what our opponent's doing here. Because we are going to turn this into a creature. They don't have any colored mana. Yeah, I think he just made a misplay here. We'll block here. Yeah, that's a misplay from our opponent. Merfolk is pretty strange to play. It has like a lot of weird interactions where like this gets like other things plus one plus one, but not itself. And... A lot of math involved another spreading seas might as well drop it it will cost three though put it on the planes and our opponent passed this guy uh oh no we don't have any more basic shoot we draw curse catchers hoping for another land to attack with mutavolt can't really do anything now we'll pass turn back maybe it wouldn't hurt to have one forest in the deck for like situations like this opponent swings in for five no blocks from us we go to 13 at the end of turn we'll vial in harbinger bouncing thalia Please hit a green, please hit a green. Opponent files in Thalia. Erg, still no green. We're kind of in a tough spot here. He could have the angel to flicker this, to flicker this. But I think we can work around it. We'll drop in this guy and then curse catch. Now let's think about all different ways he can get us here. Actually, with this thing being cast, we can just tap down the vial just to see if he's going to pull any shenanigans. Allows it to tap. All right, maybe he doesn't have anything. Worst case scenario, he paths this guy. Maybe we shouldn't attack. Maybe we'll, we'll just attack with Harbinger. I think that's a pretty safe move. So swing in for four. No blocks for our opponent. Pass the turn back. Swings in for three. No blocks. And at the beginning of our turn, he uses path on us. Uh, no basics. And no green mana. This thing could be problematic. Actually, not really. But maybe. I think best move here would be to drop spreading seeds just to draw a card. Drop it on this thing here. Cool. And we get a depth. Vial it in. Lord of Atlantis. Kind of afraid to swing in here. Although we can do the same thing as last time. Tapping down Vial. Or just tapping down Thalia. Kind of a tough call here. Could have the Angel. Could have another Flicker Wisp. Ooh. Actually, let's just untap Vial. Drop in Lord of Atlantis now. I mean, could wait. Now's fine. And I think we're pretty safe. If they try anything, and they have one card in hand. It, it's worth the risk, I think. We'll swing in with three guys. Looks like our opponent's going to take it. They are at two. We'll pass the turn back. And our opponent concedes. All right. Going into game two, I'm going to put in two Nature's Claims for the Aether Vials, one Dismember, and get rid of three Curse Catchers. But other than that, we could put in this, but I don't think it's worth it. I think we'll just go to game two. Opening hand looks really good. We'll keep it. Opponent drops a file, and we will drop Hierarch. Opponent passed our guy. Sure. Get our island. And I think the best play here, ooh, maybe we should drop Mutavolt. That might have been a misplay there. Nah, not really. All right, we'll drop in Silvergill, pull another one, and pass turn. And no plays from our opponent. What are the odds they have, like, Dust Dawn or Wrath of God? I guess we'll find out. Drop in the Adept. Opponent draws. Now it should be attacked. We could drop in Lord of Atlantis, swing in. No islands so and no island walk. Worst case scenario, he path to Exiles and then Thalia's. But I think it's a worthwhile risk. We'll drop in Lord of Atlantis and swing in for, th ooh, pretty risky. Yeah, just to be safe, we'll wait till next turn, drop spreading seas. Does have path to exile. Best move here, we'll drop down spreading seas on this. 
pull a cavern. And just for the sake of mana efficiency, I think we'll just drop down Kira. And that'll protect her stuff from Flicker Wisp and Paths. And then we'll pass the turn. What will they vile in? Flicker Wisp. So probably gonna do this his own land. No, to this guy here. All right, gonna drops down another Thraben. Draws and swings in for three. And now we have Dismember. We will drop in Master of the Pearl Trident. And now we'll swing in. We have Dismember if he tries anything. So when it draws, I have two cards in hand, but no blocks. Should we drop Harbinger? Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll drop in Harbinger. Hopefully there's no board wipe or anything. But we won't return that to hand because I don't want the flicker ability to happen. And then we'll pass the turn back. Another Thraven. The opponent passes it back to us. Ooh, Collective Company. Might as well just swing in with everything and just see what happens. And if anything fishy happens, we can use Collected Company. Opponent blocks like this, so we'll fire it off. Only hit one creature, but it's Master of the Pearl Trident, which does help us out here. And our opponent just conceded. All right, sure. So not too bad. I mean, Death and Tax is a pretty good matchup for us. Because with like Leon and Arbiter, we don't search our deck. Path does bother us, but not a whole lot. But overall, the league went pretty well. I mean, we went four and one. Like we always go four and one. Why do we always go four and one? There are a lot of jank decks out there, so I don't really feel like I don't know. I don't feel like we really understand the deck that much. For a lot of time, it's a typical Merfolk deck with a green twist. And Collective Company does seem like a nice addition along with Noble Hierarch. And even without the choke thing, the deck's pretty solid. I think it's up there with regular Merfolk. I think it kind of just depends on how much red board wipes out there, because if there's a lot of red board wipe, then Master of the Waves is pretty sweet to have. But the problem right now isn't really red. In the past, it was always like Lightning Bolt that got to Merfolk a lot, but then it seems like recently Fatal Push is the card that is really annoying for Merfolk. So Master of the Waves is good against red, but and it's also a really good finisher. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are going to watch this and say that Master of the Waves is like the best card in the deck and that taking out was a mistake, but Collected Company, just the element of surprise, like the fact, the fact that you do it as an instant, and people don't really expect it that much, I think makes the deck fresh. But unfortunately right now, I just don't feel like the deck is all that viable just because Fatal Push and so, so much creature removal. If you look at like all the top decks being played right now, so much of it's geared around destroying creatures. And it's just so hard for Merfolk, especially if it's like instant speed and you're attacking in and you think you have unblockable creatures and they kill one of your creatures and now all of a sudden your creatures aren't unblockable and they can get some good trades off and it's, it's pretty tough now. But I'm going to wrap things up here. If you like the video and you want to see more of this deck, you can let me know in the comments. You can subscribe. Let me know you want to see more videos like this. And I hope you have a great day.